Our next stop is the Robert J. Kemp Jr. Our next stop is the Robert J. Kemp Jr. Fishery Center. Are you going to be filming any of this? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, hold on. Oh, sure. Fish hatchery, one of five state fish hatcheries in the state of Texas. If you didn't know, there's only one natural lake in Texas, and that's Lake Caddo. So all your lakes are reservoirs, they're man made. So by creating all those reservoirs, you created a bunch of habitat for fish. And we didn't really have species of fish that naturally live in the lakes like that, so we produced the fish. What we make here is Florida largemouth bass, northern largemouth bass, Guadalupe bass, which is the state fish. We raise channel catfish, bluegills. We do hybrid stripers in the spring. We have trout in the race phase right now. It's wintertime. We get them from Missouri. We don't raise them. Our water's not cold enough. Um, we have goldfish, koi, and fathead minnows here. The reason we raise those is that's what we feed our bass. That's their food source. Um, in this room, this is the incubation room where we incubate the hybrid striper eggs, which is going to be a female striped bass crossed with a white male bass. They'll be sterile so that we can control those populations out in the wild. This room is also used to incubate the catfish eggs where they sit in these little uh, jars and there's a tube that goes in there. Let's see if I can find one. Is this will be filled with water and there'll be eggs in here. Water comes down in this and it swirls the eggs and that's so the eggs don't suffocate each other and, you know, die. What's the thing called again? This is a McDonald jar. This is called a shad tube. A McDonald jar? McDonald jar, I think. that little yolk sac and then they're able to start swimming. They start swimming up. They're, they're gonna hatch in about a three day period. They start to swim up, we're able to catch them in these vats. Our, most of our objectives here is we're trying to raise two inch fingerlings, so 38 to 40 millimeters. And then those are the, the fish we're eating. I take you outside and we can sling some catfish feed, but they're not gonna eat today. Uh. These are our shipping and holding troughs. And so after we pick up the mats that are in these raceways down here, yeah, I'm gonna we bring them up in here. And the reason to do, uh, we use hydrogen peroxide, it helps kill some of the uh, different fungus and, and there's water mold and different things that are in the water and it helps the eggs hatch rate. We usually get about a 90 plus, 98% plus hatch rate. We're also able to keep the fish from eating the eggs. That's a big problem. They're, they're huge cannibals. When we do catfish, they'll be in what's called a spondo. It's a big old crock jar and they they swim inside the, the spondo and they spawn, they lay their eggs. Well, the female is gonna try to eat her eggs. So you've gotta get, a, so all the fish eat a, a, some kind of pelletized feed or some kind of feed except for our bass. The bass go out into the ponds once they swim up. It's usually about seven to 10 days and we have a full hatch. We try to do about three days worth of, they're gonna eat zooplankton. Zooplankton eat phytoplankton, so you have your food chain. We put fertilizer in the water to create an algae bloom to give the zooplankton, little bugs, something to eat, and then the fish, the fry, the baby fish, eat the zooplankton, and in about 45 days, they're ready to go out to the lakes. So they'll be two inches. Yeah. It's about a six week tops that they're here. I've got some fish here that are 12, 13 years old. We have them in here over winter. We brought them in so we could get them climatized and yeah, just so we could check our inventory. We needed some pond space. Oh, we the goldfish. Yeah, that's the goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> and and what? Know? And, and, uh, and they're all in a water place, too. Oh, are they going to the heading there now, guys? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, baby. I think when we walk uh, away, that's when they go. You gotta stay there. You gotta stay there. Okay. Where goes? All right, let's go over, okay? Are they going to eat it? Mm -hmm. Not funny. We call it the gold. You want to see a lot of gold? We have a lot of gold. 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 We have a lot of g
most number of portraits I've ever seen. Right, yeah. <laughs> Look at all of those school space. neighborhood fishing program. The reason we also make fish is we want people to be able to have a you know a, a fishing experience and something to do outdoor recreationally. That's Those cool. look like the bass from the other. Yeah, the but look how slimy they are. They have little skin on them out in the scales. The first time I've seen invisible fish. So cool. Uh, I also have an aquatic biology degree with a minor in biochemistry. <laughs> Catfish, right? Is it? Chip, chip, chip. It's not rainbow trout. No, this is not. This is not catfish. <laughs> what? These guys ate earlier this morning, but they should still be hungry. These guys like to eat. Boiling water. These we're trying to fatten up. Um, we'll keep feeding them till the end of this month. of them are one acre ponds, they hold 1.25 million gallons of water, five of them are quarter acre ponds, they hold about 265,000 gallons of water, so they're really like a fifth, but we can control our, our different population densities, when we're raising the little guys, we put about 150,000 fry in each pond, and then in that 45 day window, they're going to be about that 40 millimeter um, size that we're looking for trying to do a, a more robust fingerling. When they're little guys, they're just little fingerling. Once they come from inside the building to a pond, they're a fingerling. Yeah. What's the reason for making yeah. it so slippery? So people don't steal the fish? No, it's rubber. <laughs> now it's He's gonna come right to us. An empty pond, so you can see it's what I mean about how hey, we don't get too close. What's your question? Guys, you've got a, a hypolimnion, a metalimnion, and a uh, oh, crud, hold on. Metalimnion's in the middle, hypolimnion's in the bottom. So it, it 
layers and how that works is your cold water's denser, it's heavier, so it goes down towards the bottom, your warm water's gonna come up top. Now people say, well, what about when it freezes? When water freezes, on these cold lakes, that cold water on the bottom starts to freeze and it comes back up and makes the lakes turn over. That's what turnover is called. We don't really have that here because it's not cold enough, but there's, but there's different layers of temperature in these ponds. The back of the pond is shallow, the front of the pond is deeper. It's going to be almost 12 feet deep. What's the black things all over the This stuff? Yeah. That's where the county came in and was trying to seal all the cracks, keep our road from falling apart. So how this works is when we need to get into a pond, we'll start draining it. We usually let it take about three or four days to drain. They drain into this can, this kettle. It's called a Kansas kettle. We're able to turn on this bottom water valve to keep water flowing to the fish here, and it goes out the back. What we then do is a guy's going to jump in here, and he's going with a big old net. And he's going to crowd them around just like you were corralling cattle, and we have screens that fit in those slots, so we can drop the screen, and then. We take five gallon buckets with a little bit of water in them, put them on a scale, zero that out, and you scoop the fish into that bucket and weigh them. We do sampling of weights, we get measurements, the length measurements, and that gives us our average. So we know about how many fish per kilo we have and all the numbers you need for that information. Our brooders, we uh, get them out individually in a little round net and handle them a little bit different because we don't want our brooders to be stressed or injured and they're bigger fish. Some of the bass out here are 12 pounds. Wow, 12 pounds. Um, the majority of them, we try to keep them poop. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. Uh, I'll go show y'all one of the trucks. I don't mind one of the vulture, but the, oh, the buzzer. The cormorants are gonna eat, I think, 0.7 up to like one and a half kilos. Oh. They're just gluttons, they eat and it's ridiculous. We had white pelicans last year. Those guys came in here. You want to talk about eating goldfish? Oh my gosh! How do you tell Lucy from Juicy apart? Uh, it depends. Together, it yeah. <laughs> so you don't know which one is which? Yeah, that's the male and that's the female. What? Oh. You can tell by the end of their wing feathers. I can tell when they get fatter. Is that fat? They just hang out. They've been here since I've been here. I've been here about five years. You gotta retire. All that over there is fish poop. It's piles of fish poop. And it looks like dirt. The top parts look like dirt, and some piles on the bottom look like rocks. North of Amarillo, uh, some of our trips are gonna be looking at 1,300 miles. Texas is a big place. Um, let's go check out this one right here. trailers work is it's three compartments. It's a total of 2,380 liters. I think it's about 668, 69 gallons of water. When you get one of these fully loaded, you're looking at right around 10,800 pounds, 11,000 pounds. Not a big deal weight wise, but it's water. So it sloshes. So when you're driving, it sloshes. You stop, it's going to slosh. It's, you set the cruise control in there, you're going to make yourself uh, motion sick because it's going to start to... But come on up here. I'm going to see how it works. What we do in these trailers, we have oxygen going into the, the compartments holding the fish. You can see inside here, these little stones are going to provide them with oxygen. There's going to be water in here. Those are little agitators to keep the water agitated. And when we need to stock the fish, we pull a plug out. It's right here, one of these plugs. It'll be inside, keeping all your fish and water in here. And we pull this plug out when we get to our stocking site and they come shooting out the back. I'm going to show you where they shoot out. Nice. 
Yeah, so you drive four or five, maybe 11 hours to where you're going, and you know, by the little quantum. We, we do have to have all, we do sex all of our fish, so the odd number of cons have any more. Thank you, Mr. Andy. All right, y'all be good. Say thank you, Mr. Andy. Thank you, Jesus. That's funny.